you're watching the 5 Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right hand corner. So we're live here today on the 5 Minute Bark Podcast. I'm so excited to have... Peter Scott here today from the Fearless Mindset. This book cover is beautiful, by the way. Thank you, Dennis. It's so beautiful. So, <laughs> I met Peter Scott actually through somebody else's Facebook. I was stalking his Facebook. We got Brad here today in the um, audience. We're going to be interviewing him after we are here with Peter today. But long story short, we were at the um, some g- amazing event for social media downtown and got to hang out with Brad. And one thing led to another. I was watching that he's here in San Diego and he ended up attending one of your events. Your fearless life mind, experience. Life, your fearless life experience. Yes. And, and all my guests lately have been all about that. So being bold, being brave, including myself. Yeah. And it, it's you know it's a topic really that kind of it's like the, the the shortcut to 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 success. It is, and it's sometimes the most avoided thing because a lot of people want to have the instant results, like the surface level results, yet they aren't willing to dive deep into the mindset, the limiting beliefs, the fears, the insecurities, the things that are required to look at and overcome in order to create the results that they want. Exactly. And so if you're looking for a shortcut, I think we might have that for you here today to success. And I'm not kidding by that because if you are fearless, if you are bold, brave and all that, that goes with that, you're just going to do things. And it's all about execution. Correct. That's exactly right. Dennis, when I talk about being fearless, I don't mean being without fear. So the person watching this, I don't think it's healthy or good or even possible to be without fear. The key is to have the courage and the confidence to do the thing that scares you. So you just said action. You can't overcome your fears until you take action towards them and move through them. That's the only way it's possible. Isn't it funny sometimes when you, like I'm sure you experience this all the time in your your, uh, events, Mm -hmm. where somebody's like so scared of something and then I laugh after like, that was so easy. <laughs> All the time. All the time. All the time. I had a, um, I had a chiropractor attend one of my events and he had a huge fear of going into the ocean. In fact, he messaged me before he started. I take my group out surfing at the experience, which is a really face your fear experience. And he, uh, he said no matter what, he wasn't going to go out there. And then he ended up uh, doing it and being courageous. And afterwards, he breaks down crying on the beach. And I go, Calvin, what happened? Like, why was this so big for you? And he said... Because for the last five years, his daughter has been begging him to take her snorkeling and they travel all over the world and he would never do it. And she never understood why. And it was because his fear of the ocean, of sharks, of, of all these things that were, so, I mean, it's, it's more dangerous to drive a car and to get on a plane than it is to be in the ocean. However, that fear stopped him. And now he looked at how irrational it was. And now he's actually created amazing life changing experiences with his daughter because of that. And now he's going to do it for more and more things because he knows it's possible. Yep. So let's rewind back to you. And, and you know, I, I loved watching your video, your story. Thank you. Tell us about this because this is really, you know, what we all kind of want. Yes. So the reason why I'm so passionate about helping people overcome fear is because my entire life has been consumed by it. So when I was 10 years old, I had to sit down in a courtroom with my grandparents to my left, an attorney to my right, and my mother directly across from me. And at 10 years old, I had to look into my mom's eyes and tell her that I no longer felt safe living with her because of her alcoholism. I mean, just imagine having to do that at 10 years old. I can't. Um, I had no idea how that would impact my life, but it made me make a decision. And this is what happens is an event happens in our life where we make a decision that limits us for years until we face that. And that decision was telling the truth meant losing love. By me telling my mom the truth, I lost her love. So I became this inauthentic version of myself trying to seek love and approval and validation from everyone outside of me. It's amazing. And you know, um, you're making me think here, like when did you, realize that that's the story that held you back? It was in my mid twenties. So it really controlled me for uh, 15 additional years from that moment. I didn't realize that for many years. And then, um, another pivotal event, my father gets rushed to the hospital and his health was deteriorating for several years. And this was the, the last, he was being rushed to hospice. And I remember walking in and asking my dad, why did you do this to yourself? And why did you do this to me and he looked at me and he said, Peter, because I am afraid. He was 
terrified of not living up to his parents' expectations. And that was the exact thing, Dennis, that I was living my life for. I was working in investment banking. I wasn't doing coaching. I wasn't doing things that I was passionate about. I was miserable, yet I was terrified to leave that because of the security, because of the approval, because society deemed it worthy. And yet I noticed what happened and my my dad literally gave up on life and drank himself to death. And that was the moment at 25 where I said, I'm done. I'm never going to let myself, a loved one, or anyone I come in contact with be controlled by fear. Now, I didn't know how that was going to work. I didn't, you know, I, yeah. I read books, I attended courses, I hired mentors, but it took, I, I jumped out of planes, I hiked high mountains. I did those things to understand this thing that was stopping me. And now this is my calling. This is my mission to help others do wow. that. I mean, I certainly suffer from fears all the time. We all mm-hmm. do. I guess there's just different levels of it, you know, yes. more and more levels of it. But I think if, if you're listening out there and you're underst- understanding that you have some issues that are holding you back, which we all do, it's, it's something you will find out later on if you don't take realization of it. So whether it's today's podcast or your mentor, your coach, or your friend slapping you across the face that you get the reality hit that says enough's enough. It, it's time to take action. Absolutely. And I, I know a lot of your viewers are high achievers. They're elite performers. And so many people, maybe the person watching this right now, maybe think, you know, Dennis, that sounds you know great for most people, but I don't have any fear. And I get that. But here's what I'd have you consider. Stress. Do you have stress? Because I think everyone has stress. And stress is nothing more than the high achievers version of fear. When you follow your stress, I guarantee you, you will find an underlying fear. And the over only way to overcome that is to address the irrational fear that's creating that stress and move through that and do that thing that scares you because it literally affects everyone and it changes, right? Maybe when you're starting out, you're launching a business, you're afraid of, of judgment or rejection or failure. And then you get to the next level and now you've got some fear of success because you realize that you've had to work a lot. Maybe you're afraid of losing the freedom that you've created from the success that you have now to get to the next level. So it, sh- it, it changes constantly. And the key is to not be without fear. It's to be aware. What is it that you're afraid of? and realize that it's not serving you, it's not real usually, and then committing to to doing that very thing that terrifies you. And then what happens after that? Then your courage builds. You know, uh, one of my best friends who you interviewed is Sean Stevenson. And I love, he, he, he once told me that with every act of courage, you get a point of confidence. With every act of courage, you get a point of confidence. And what I want the viewer to know is they think that they need to feel courageous or be confident before doing something that scares them. It's actually the opposite. Courage and confidence are results. They're not requirements. They are not a requirement for you to go do that thing. If you wait around for courage and confidence in your life, you're going to wait literally your entire life. Your whole life is going to pass you by. So why not? When we know like, and I don't say this to be morbid, but the only destination that I know of that's certain is death, right? Why? When that's the, that's the end, why fear anything in the first place? When life is so fragile, when our time is so limited, why let those fears stop you and keep you playing small when you really have literally nothing to lose? You know, this is bringing back a memory of um, my 20s and uh, going to bars. Yeah. And uh, we knew that like, if we didn't just approach the women, mm-hmm. We had like a 15 minute rule. If we don't talk to any girls before we leave 15 minutes, we'll, we'll just leave in the bar because yep. we're chicken. Yep. And uh, so we'd all scatter and just get that, that one conversation. But it, it, you're right. If you sit around, just like in, in a bar situation, trying to meet the person of your life, yep. um, even though sometimes bar is not the place to do that, but that one, that whole sitting around, it's like a mini version of your life because you're just sitting around hoping that person is going to talk to you, hoping the confidence is going to come. You just got to, you got to hit the ground running. Totally. And be willing to face that fear. So like a lot of, and I can relate to that in my twenties, <laughs> you know, um, the fear there was rejection for me. I was terrified of being rejected. And when I started my business, I was terrified of being rejected by making a proposal. Maybe I was offering a coaching opportunity or an event, whatever it was. And I learned to shift my mindset to actually 
pursue being rejected to collect no's. Like I yeah. know that the yes is on the other side of that. So I need to go through a, a series of no's and a series of rejections and a series of failures in order to get to that other side. And so few people actually do that. They see that and they're frozen. And the moment you're frozen, that's when you need to leap forward. Dennis, I get so excited about this stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's just like so hard, but yet so simple. And we just don't do it sometimes. We just don't do it. And every time we do it, we go, yeah, I did it. Oh, my God. That was so, ah, oh, I feel good. And all of a sudden, you're just talking to everybody and you're yep. just doing everything. And and it's just so easy but so hard. Yep. <laughs> and, and a great way to, to, to get yourself into the state of doing that is to make a public declaration. Yes. There's something that shifts internally when you declare something that you're committed to because your friends see that declaration, your family does, the people that you care about most. And oftentimes we're more concerned about letting others down than ourselves. You know, if you keep that to yourself, then no one's going to hold you accountable. But when I wrote my book, I declared that I was committed to doing it. And then I, I had some skin in the game. I had so many fears. I had so many insecurities. I had a lot of challenges around that. And yet, because I declared that, I said, this isn't, you know, who am I to let these fears stop me when this is my message, right? The great thing about choosing fearless as a message is it forces me to face my fears literally every day. Yeah. There's, there's some great people that said that oftentimes, find your, find your fears and, and meet them head on. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about this experience that Brad had here mm-hmm. uh, this weekend and, and maybe even talk about him. Why not? What, what did he get out of your little I event I would love to. Weekend? Yeah. So Brad just came through and this is Brad Hart, by the way. Mr. Um, Brad Hart. So you'll see his interview uh, shortly, I'm sure, as, uh, as this gets released. Um, Brad came through my event, The Fearless Life Experience. It's a three-day event. He's getting a little nervous now. It's held, I know, he'll, do, he'll rock this interview. Um, it's held in San Diego and it's a very exclusive event for elite performers. Primarily entrepreneurs don't have have to be entrepreneurial it's entrepreneurial minded people it's limited to 10 people and you literally go through the experience of conquering fear so that you can make the impact and earn the income you desire because if you don't feel like you're making the impact and you don't feel like you're earning the income you want it's not because you're lacking knowledge or know-how it's something around your mindset so what i do is i teach mindset and peak performance training in this and it's very experiential it's not some hotel ballroom with hundreds of people we go through intense fitness workouts because fitness is a foundation of overcoming fear when you commit to sweating every single day and you've got peak performance rituals, you get in a state where when you've got that fear, your default is taking action. Your default is taking action, which is so, so important. So Brad got to experience that. Um, I'll let him share some of the results that he got out of it, but I know that it was incredibly valuable and it's, it's my calling. You know, I did my first event a year and a half ago. I launched my coaching business only three years ago, Dennis, at the time of this recording. Um, I had no message. I had no idea who my client was, yet I leaped off of that cliff of uncertainty because I knew that by me creating content, by be my by me sharing my message, the clarity would happen as a result. And this was my fifth event and, and something happens when for, for for the entrepreneur listening that may be a coach or a, a speaker when you get the opportunity to impact somebody's life over a multi-day experience and witness the transformation, there's nothing more meaningful. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's life in its fullest right there. Yeah. I, I commend you on that. It's just Thank amazing you. to you. And it's your job. It's your living mm-hmm. at the same time. So three years ago, you're, you're starting out. You just hit the ground running. Yeah. Talk, us about the, talk to us about the first client. Okay. That's, that's, okay. You know, that's the hump. Yes. So, so, so first of all, I I wouldn't say I hit the ground running. I hit and I fell on my face over and over and over again. In fact, I launched this at the time when I lost my sole source of income. So my income evaporates. I get into a conversation with a potential mentor, right? To work with him. I see tremendous value. He's got the results that I want. Um, He can help me get the results that, that I want Uh, to work with him is a $20,000 investment. Wow. Okay. And many of us have these moments where we can choose to stay in our comfort zone or do the thing that terrifies us. And I became resourceful. I you know, invested all the money that I had. I borrowed money from family, took on credit card debt to do this because I knew that this working with this man would help me collapse time. And I think that's one thing I want to share with the viewer is the importance of finding a mentor or being a part of somebody who has the results that you want because they can accelerate the process. Can you get, it on, get those results on your own? 
Absolutely. But why take 10 years when you can do it in one year? So that was what happened. Um, I had zero certainty, zero confidence, but within the first 30 days, I got my first client. I met him at an event and all I did was shift this place of scarcity, which was, I need to get a client. I need to get money. I've got to pay rent at the end of the month. Cause that was the energy and the state that I was in. And I think we've all been there at some point. Right. And I shifted to yes. <laughs> how can I serve this person without attachment to what that outcome looks like? And we got into a conversation and where I started before mindset and, and, and business coaching and peak performance, it was all fitness because I had transformed my body from being a, a overweight, a miserable investment banker to being in shape. And so I saw this man stuck and I knew it wasn't lack of information. I knew it was his mindset. So I just said, and, and I got into a conversation of how I could serve him, what his vision was, what was stopping him. And I courageously made a proposal fully expecting him to say no. Um, and he said yes. And it wasn't a, a considerable amount of money. I think my first coaching client was $500 a month. So that's where I started, right? And, and obviously, for the person watching this who wants to raise their prices and charge what they're worth, the best way to charge what you're worth is to invest in yourself. Because by me having speaking mentors and book mentors and coaching mentors, my abilities have gone up and it's given me the certainty to raise my rates. You know, and that's a good topic to talk about because, of course, you're worth more. We're always yeah. worth more. But to get started, you just need to get that one transaction. You know? Yes. If, even if it's... Even if it's $20. Exactly. It doesn't have to be $500 a month. Right. But you do really want to exchange value, meaning exactly. free coaching or free... Uh, anything free is worth the price you pay. Yeah. And Joe Polish, a mentor of mine, says that people don't pay... Uh, attention unless they pay. And I believe that having Sean Stevenson as my best friend, right, is an incredible gift. He's told me so much that I could do to improve my coaching business and to become a better speaker. Yet it wasn't until I invested 20K in my first mentor where I literally got the same advice. But because I made the investment, that's when I implemented it. Does that make sense? Yes. Because free advice. So, so for those of you that have a service or a product, it's a disservice to humanity and to the people that you feel called to serve if you're not charging for what you're offering because that's what gets people committed to actually take the action necessary to get the results. Exactly. It, it's something that you just, once you charge 20, you go to 50, you yeah. go to 100, you go to 500, you go to 5,000, go to 20,000. It. But we all want to just like start at the top and you got to start somewhere yeah. just to get that transaction, the confidence, yep. right? Start from where you are. Yep. It's very easy to fall into the trap of comparison and saying, I'm going to compare myself to Tony Robbins, yeah. right? He's been doing it for 30 years to have the expectation that I can, you know, charge what he's charging right now is a little unrealistic. Yep. So I'm going to start from where I'm at. I'm going to build my experience. I'm going to create the results that I want. And when you're actually serving your clients, you get to see the proof and the evidence that what you know and what you offer is valuable because when you start, you don't know that yet. Right. And if your belief is that you aren't worthy of creating value, then your mind literally only notices those things. It doesn't notice the times that you create value. So the first paid agreement, whether it's a coaching client or a customer in your business, oh, under promise and over deliver, like really over deliver because your certainty goes up and that gives you the capacity to serve at an even greater le level. And be confident with that over serving because sometimes you know, you're going to get those people just aren't happy and that just happens, yep. but just own it. You, I did what I was supposed to do. And I'm, don't let it keep solid about yep. it. Right? And yeah. make sure that those people are committed to really implementing what you're coaching them. Um, being a coach, I have this inner, uh, at times, um, let's just say savior. I want to, I want to help everyone. Right. And this will show up in family for sure, where I try to help my sister or my mom when they don't necessarily want it. And there's an incredible motto that the coast guard has. And when the coast guard goes out to a shipwreck, right in the middle of a storm and they've got six seats on a helicopter and there's 20 people stranded in the water, the question they have to ask them themselves is how do we know who to save? And their motto is that you only can save the people that are swimming towards you. 
Because if you try to save the people that are swimming away, you're going to drown in the process. And I've had to learn that where I, I'm on the phone with somebody that I know and I have the utmost certainty that I can create massive value for and serve, but I can't want it more than they want it themselves. And I've had to learn to let go and detach myself from that outcome because until they get committed, that's the only way they're going to implement and get the results from us working together. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Peter, one good question I want to ask here mm-hmm. today is obviously this is amazing what you're doing. It's really amazing. Thank you. <clears throat> but what my question next is now is what are you going to do for my world from here on out? For your world. For my world. Your world, my world, our world. What What's going on? What's, what's the next level? Yeah, so I am committed to helping a million people transform their relationship with fear so that it never stops them again. That's my mission. Okay, starting with a million. I figured I'd start small yeah. and then build from there. It's not to eradicate fear or take it away because I think fear is a good thing. It's part of life. It is. I always say there, there are two types of fear. There are rational fears that keep you alive and there are irrational fears that keep you from living. A rational fear would be that fear that you feel being woken up in the middle of the night to a burglar breaking into your home. That fear is a good thing. That fight or flight response keeps you alive. You want that. Mm-hmm. The challenge is the same fear that you feel when you're being interviewed on a podcast, when you're sharing your message on stage, that fear of public speaking, that fear of rejection, that fear of failure, literally Dennis feels exactly the same in your body. And so my commitment and what I'm going to do for the world is to impact as many people as possible to transform that relationship because I know that's the only thing, the one thing that is stopping people when they can overcome their fears, get into a state of taking action, no matter how unclear they are, no matter how little of a plan they have, when they get into that state, magic happens. Yeah, you, know, you keep making me think. I'm going to think, I think <laughs> myself to death here. But, you know, the whole fear thing, if we were literally completely 100% fearless, mm-hmm. we would be divine. We'd be like unstoppable, essentially God, essentially, right? Because mm-hmm. we'd be able to do anything because our mind has a capacity to get us through any kind of situation because we can manipulate it quickly, but being in that fearless state and being aware, mm-hmm. um, effective, you know, cause this, this fear, but when, when you learn how to be in fear and then be effective at the same time. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's finding comfort in fear because I, f- I love fear. fear. Yeah, there's a, uh, I think his name is Fritz Prill or something. I, I'm going to butcher his name, but he says fear and ex- uh, fear is just excitement without the breath. And I love that fear is just excitement without the breath. The key is to breathe into that fear mm-hmm. because it literally is a form of excitement. If you let it be that in your body, now you can hold your breath, you can tense yourself. And I'm sure the person watching this may have experienced this. If they had any fear of public speaking, I know I had growing up mm-hmm. tremendously and I've learned to close my eyes, to breathe into that, to channel that fear into an excitement that pushes me forward because that's the only way I can impact somebody is that. So don't run away towards that. Look at that fear as that's a signpost, a guide of what you need to be doing in your life of what, you know, the conversation that you most fear having is the most valuable conversation you could have right now with, with your partner or with a friend or with a family member that, that, that hesitation, that resistance, that's a good thing. Move towards that. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been a public speaker, motivational speaker for most of my life. I've done over 3000 events wow. actually. Yeah. And, um, as an athlete, okay. I used to be a professional athlete. You can see the movies and stuff we've done. Yeah. But, um, when I go and I each and every cloud, I'm, I'm I got the fear you get yeah. the, you know, the jitters and stuff like that. But I almost always thought about, okay, just jump over the fence and you, it's gone. Yep. And if you really kind of do that, like then you're like, I own this place. Like you almost have to like be like a God almost like I, they're looking at me. They're looking at me for resource right now. Yes. Own it. Absolutely. Right? Like when you really connect to how much of an impact you have in your ways of being and what you're doing and you commit to being the example of what's possible, that's really a thing that gets me up out, out of bed in the morning. You know, there are days when I don't feel like working out. There are days when I don't feel like doing my, my ritual and those things, but who would I be if I asked my clients to do those things and held them to that standard, yet I didn't do them myself. 
you know? And so I think a lot about my sister, my sister's six years younger than me. And I've had the tendency to be that big brother giving her advice when she wasn't necessarily requesting it. And I've learned to simply be the example. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm living my life at the highest level, I'm helping her because it's creating um, a vision of what's possible for herself. And now after doing that, she's actually coming to me asking for support, which is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, you know, I, I I get the lucky uh, ability to interview over 170 people now, mm-hmm. and one of them, a great friend of mine now, actually named Jim Case, he told me, Dennis, it, to show up and be in an experience like you and I are in an experience right now. We're, yeah. we're talking, and if I didn't show up at my best self here today for this interview, then how can I provide to you? In other words, if I don't yeah. come here with my best, how am I going to get the right questions out? How am I going to get you in the right emotion to speak? clearly, intensely, mm-hmm. emotionally, and effectively about you and your business and, and the experiences. And that's something we, we also have to kind of incorporate in this fearlessness, people, is you got to show up. Yeah, you absolutely do. And I, um, I, have a, a, I don't take any coaching calls before 10 a.m. And I have a very specific reason for that, is that if I take calls at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., then I don't give myself time for me. And that means that for me right now, my ritual is working out, is having a green smoothie, is meditating, is doing these different rituals that put me into a peak state. And when I do that, I'm at my highest capacity. I'm in my best self. When I don't do those things, my clients only get a fraction of me, right? Had I not done those things today, you would only get a fraction of me on this interview. But because I say committed to those things and get in that state, I know that I, I feel so much more confident because I did those. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm so that's the, I'm the same with my podcast. I will not do them before nine or 10 yep. because I'm just not there and I won't do them after three because I'm just kind of all over the place. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and it's really, it's the highest way to serve. Like when, when you take care of yourself first and I get that the person watching this may feel like Dennis, Peter, that sounds great, but you don't have the commitments and the responsibilities that I have. I get that, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you've got kids all, all the time, right? There's gotta be a way because you will not find the time to do these things. You have to create the time. You have to actually create the time. That may be forcing yourself to have a nightly ritual that allows you to unwind earlier so that you can wake up that extra hour in the morning, right? But when you do these things, you literally get more done in less time. When I am in a peak state, when I have high energy, when I can think clearly, when I can focus, I can get done in four hours what takes most people 12 hours to do. And so that's the power of these rituals is commit to doing them and over, it it will be uncomfortable in the beginning. You will need self-discipline and willpower, but those things are limited resources. The key is to string together as many days as possible until that habit is turned into a something that's unconscious, where it's your identity. I don't require self-discipline for fitness. It's just who I am. It's what I do. Same thing with meditation. However, I needed to when I started. So start small, get some, some daily wins together, and your certainty, your confidence, your capacity will expand, and you will be blown away. When fear comes up, again, the fear's not gonna go away. It's your relationship to that that changes. Awesome. Peter, thank you for coming coming on the show. This is awesome. Dennis, thank you this so much. So really good. appreciate and, you having um, me. I've got an amazing book here in front of me. I'm certainly going to learn more about it and thank read you. it. And uh, I want to definitely, we'll talk after the mic's turned off. But listeners, I hope you got some value out of today. I know I did. And I'm sure you did too because I, you know, I talk to these people all the time. So I should be getting less value, than, but I'm getting more value. So I hope you get value. And I hope you reach out to Peter and Peter, would you please share, you know, how they can get a hold of you? Facebook, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, spaceships, whatever you got spaceships for sure. (laughs) Um, if you just search Peter Scott IV as in the fourth, you can find me on social media. Send me a friend request. Uh, my website is design a fearless life.com. There's a lot of amazing free content blogs on there. Um, there's also a gift I'd love to share with your audience. Um, I have a, uh, uh, a five, uh, free virtual five day face your fear challenge, which is awesome. So for the person watching this who wants to really face their fears and overcome them, um, basically what you do is you get a daily video from me. It's really short, five minutes, and it challenges you to conquer one specific fear in your life. It could be failure, rejection, judgment, but you learn something, then you go and implement it. And it's free. There's nothing, no, no obligation. Um, so the viewers can get that at challengeyourfear.com. Awesome. You heard it. And 
you know, I encourage you to go to his website because I watched his video actually three times myself <laughs> personally. It's a really good video. You kind of really get to, um, obviously you've got to know him here on this podcast, but you'll get to see more of what his work is and how passionate he is there as well in the video. Um, watch it. And um, you may be inspired to get on a flight and come here to San Diego and yes. hang out with us. So I love that. And last thing, Dennis, I just want to share is um, you may be listening or watching this passively because I listen to a lot of podcasts that way. Go back and listen to this actively and write down the nuggets that you got out of this and then ask yourself, how can I implement this in my life? Because I don't, I'm not here just to inspire you and Dennis isn't either. We want to change behavior so that the results that you're getting now grow exponentially and it only comes through implementing what you learned in podcasts like like this. So if that means you get to listen to it again, you get to take notes, you get to apply it, go do that to get the best results. Awesome. Thank you again. Dennis, we'll, thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, listeners, thank you for listening. And we are out of here. Thank you, everybody. Please subscribe to our 5-Minute Bark podcast on YouTube and iTunes so you can get more awesome people like Peter Scott. Talk soon. You're watching the 5-Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right-hand corner.